you enjoyed watching or want to support the channel, remember to attack that like button. Subscribe on YouTube, follow on Twitch, or join our Discord using the link on screen or in the description below so that you can get daily updates on all of our uploads and live streams. We know we're not perfect and we can always improve, so please visit our Discord or comment below with a critique or a compliment to let us know how we can improve ourselves. Finally, if you're just starting for more content, you can become an honorary member of 3D Productions at patreon.com slash 3D and get exclusive access for as low as a dollar a month. This will also give you early access to all of our online content, including comics, gaming, music, and of course more of these reactions. Even if you're not able to do any of this, it means the world to me that you'd sit down and watch my video all the way through to the end. So I want to thank you from the bottom of my heart. Thank you. I'm Axel Grave, and I hope to see you next time for more reactions with the next. Yeah, that was, it's an interesting one. The MODOK stuff looks interesting. I'll say that at least. I'm not sure if it's going to be good or not, but I think it's really going to depend on the story for that particular mm -hmm. one. Just because I think that's what a lot of sitcoms, even though they don't seem to have a lot of story, I think that the week-to-week -week publications of the stories and how people are like affected by them really are what give them their big uh, strengths. Mm-hmm. But uh, we'll have to see, man. We'll have to see. There's so many. I, that was this one I titled like comic TV shows because there's so many. Yeah, there's a bunch coming up. Yeah, here. Yeah, and and even beyond how many, I mean, I think the quality of them has been steadily, at least in some most cases, rising. You know, uh, some some will have tough seasons or drops in quality from episode to episode, as all things tend to do, but. Especially after having seen WandaVision, going back, rewatching things like The Flash, and, uh, you know, trying to... I haven't quite checked it out, but I've heard, I've heard good things about Lois and Superman, or Superman and Lois, whatever. Oh, yeah, that came out too, not too long ago, huh? Yeah, yeah, so I think they've only got two episodes out or something, or maybe three, but definitely not a ton. And so I'm, I'm interested to see exactly how, especially with the way that WandaVision is tied in with the cinematic universe how tv in comics is going to be moving forward because it seems like yeah, it's going to have a huge place oh uh, yeah I'm, ex I'm yeah i'm excited to see what's coming up next i mean because what's uh winter soldier and the falcon this uh, month here at the towards the end or is it the uh, when does it come the up? month not wrong it should come out yeah 19th so like one week okay okay so break. not too long yeah. yeah it'll be exactly a one week break basically but well with two weeks this, but I one what week that off will set up then um since you it, know the one division's kind of setting up this whole mat getting ready for the magic kind of universe of i Marvel. mean but even beyond that i thought it was really interesting how they've set up spectrum stuff Possibly, oh, yeah. obviously not necessarily. Well, for so. Captain Marvel too is what I feel like that's going to be leading up into. Hopefully I think it'll we'll be going. That one. I don't know. We'll see how that goes, especially just depending on how Cap Captain Marvel itself does, because I know there was a whole push and pull with that character after the release. Mm -hmm. I think it was confirmed on one of their list of movies, but we'll see. Oh, I'm, I'm sure it'll come out. I'm just not sure how it'll go and what they'll do obviously it was cool that they did that stuff and they did uh heavy times at the end uh they mm -hmm. did the double cut scenes they did a lot of world building you know what i mean in the yeah. sense of like all right we have a uh, sword now we know that the where's sword's... white vision right where's white vision Although where's should... jimmy woo's kind of like this person he was looking for remember I'm, we kind of stood yeah we are still kind of looking for the astronauts so the fantastic four is a whole nother thing although we're still wondering about mutants but i think there's they have been teasing us so hard with the multiverse stuff i swear it is it's wrong man it's yeah well it's see where it's gonna go it's okay for a little bit but i feel at this point it's counterproductive for them you know what i mean kind of like people don't trust it now because we, we did it once in spider-man and for me that was like all right but now we're we did it again and for a character that i actually gave <laughs> it wasn't just like oh yeah here's mysterio he's from another universe or some shit uh -huh. it was like oh well here's some kind of interchanging between two things that we know you guys really want 
You know what I mean? Everybody wants to have the X-Men in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Yeah. There's no question about it. Not necessarily Fox's X-Men, obviously, but no. a version of the X-Men. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, we'll see where that's all going to go. I mean, for they, sure. I, there's no there's no script. Yeah, I mean, they haven't cast it. No director. Oh, I'm not. I I don't see any. So. I don't see it going anywhere anytime soon. For, yeah, Marvel still, is wow. Marvel yeah. is the king of the slow burn. Uh, yeah. they're very good at setting pieces in motion and then waiting for them to drop in place years later. Right when things but, like, yeah. and. I feel like their writing in these new stages are going to continue that trend, right? Like, Marvel, even in the comic section, has been about the business of uniformity for around 10 years now, right? Where it's like, we're getting together and we're going to get the story straight for the most part, right? There's still wrinkles and hiccups and issues, obviously too many crossovers and a billion events a year. But... but <laughs> But, yeah, there's quite a few of those. <laughs> yeah, but it, that's a result partially of this kind of conjoined story writing they do where it's like, all right, we're going to get all of our people together and make this a vision that we together know, you know, how it's going to end. It's okay if we play a little bit in the mid, you know, and try new things, do new things. Obviously, we're looking at, like, Shang-Chi, which is going to be a new kind of venturing I'm out. Um, that with um, the Tenry, uh, I, I'm, I'm looking forward. Shang-Chi is... What absolutely one of my I favorite did like, characters. I did like Shang Chi in the the Phoenix arc. He was pretty cool the way it's he was handling. Decent. I, but then I, at the very end, where they, yeah, he met they messed up. And yeah, <laughs> uh, the the my thing with Shang Chi is uh, I fell in love with him during the Avengers World arc, which was oh, okay. I can't remember if that was Hickman's Avengers, but I think it was. Because uh, it was leading up into Secret Wars. Oh yeah, that was definitely yeah his run then. Uh, and so there was there was a huge thing, but his, his, just the way his character was pushed there really made him stand out from the kind of, I guess you could say, caricature that he starts out as in classic Marvel, where it's he's like really is this kind of, uh, comic Bruce Lee. I mean Jack. Bruce Lee for sure, but even more like. A comic version of everything Chinese culture stereotype, right? Like, yeah. that was the point. And there's nothing against that, right? Like, that was how the. It I was mean, he was being there. written by white men. White so guys who had no. Thing. Right. And now, like, yeah. <laughs> and now, I think at least some of the newer stuff has been written by. Uh, people with more connection to the yeah uh, I, uh, I, I just know. finished reading his the his little mini series. Oh, did you read the new one? Up in, yeah, yeah, that's which cool. Is up into his um. I guess is ongoing. He's supposed to be having, I think. It, or? It's weird. I don't know. He's had the, he's had a couple things. They've been buffing, and and one of my the dudes I watch on YouTube has actually pointed it out to me, time and time again, that every single time uh, they do any sort of uh, new movie, the comics blow up with that character. They're yeah, everywhere. that's usually yeah. No, and it, it's for. totally totally fine. There's nothing wrong sense. with it's that. Good yeah. marketing, I guess. You no, know, because like, idea. oh hey, I just went to go see Shang Chi. I want to go read some Shang Chi comics. Well, Boom. you're in luck, boy. They we just... just got there. Out in the bookstores <laughs> now, baby. You wouldn't believe it. The coincidences. No, and then uh, I mean they were pretty cool. I read the ones you know talking about his sisters and his upbringing and the different clans and yeah, it was it's it's interesting it now, good. right? Like he's gotten better, but his character is very well developed now. I think after spending some time with other characters in the Marvel universe, like Spider Man, like Captain America and the Avengers, uh, and I'm looking forward to how they're going to incorporate him. One, yeah. He's. It sounds like they're going to like sub in on the kind of Mandarin, with the Ten Rings run. Obviously, he had stuff on his as well, but it seems like they're going to tie in, with that. But especially just with teasers we'd seen in prior Marvel shorts, uh, that did reveal oh, well, to us that. Uh, yeah, I mean, I did watch that Mandarin. I remember that when that came out for the Iron Man two, and uh, there was like a big cliffhanger for that little short where you know where they. They ended up saying, "Hey, the real Mandarin wants to meet you." It was. So I, I'm yeah. curious if they're gonna, yeah, lead back all up into this, and that'd be cool. I've, I thought Finally, it would be, right. That's right? No, it would time. be. It would be a great tie together, and it wouldn't make Iron Man two any better, or whatever Iron Man three any better. But it would. 
make the whole story of the MCU better, right? It makes it would make it more fluid to the totality. Yeah. So for ex- the my best example of that is always Rogue One. How Rogue One fills in a lot of good plot holes from oh the original yeah I Star mean, Wars run and like the best one right with like why would they build a button that would be <laughs> no it was like why do you have a vent where a one laser look man you got your car has a gas tank right what happens if you shoot it <laughs> so I mean that was all cool I love that they explained that and it was a uh, no it was, it was just was a well good done. way for them just to do a movie with not jedis and i like star you know some no, star no, no, wars for sure can prove it with the mandalorian for sure oh absolutely you that know, you can don't get need, away we with we don't always need jedi to no no have for sure wars. and and even talking about that that even though it's not necessarily comics right it, originally but now with its yeah. comic run going and the way it's done animated shows and the way it does tv and movie i think it's very safe to say that star wars is very much the same as the mcu stuff and that the tv shows and the movies very much are going to tie in and lead into each other in a very kind oh, yeah. of push yeah. and pull i mean even once again wandavision had a lot of good thematic and stuff in its own right like in its own right as a piece of art it's great but it's also once again a great piece of the moving story that is the mcu for the next yeah for the next right. phase of yeah what is this phase four now oh oh yeah i think so no maybe five no we're still in four i think because four yeah. is after the end of or starts. But what I heard is before years. all this COVID stuff came out, wasn't Doc? I think Doctor Strange was supposed to come out this year. Well, what was supposed to happen was WandaVision was supposed to be, you know, come out, and then right after that, then boom, you know, you lead up into Doctor Strange too. No, there like a, there have been a lot of changes later. and trying to but, speculate on all the different ones without like actually looking back because we had. So some I lists, wonder if that would have changed a lot of people's opinions though. You know, of the last episode, if that if that was what they would have gotten. You know, the oh. leading up right into Doctor Strange number two, knowing that oh well, don't worry guys, you know it's you know everything we can go see Doctor Strange too, and that should explain a lot. You know of uh, the dark I hole, I, and a lot of people got pissed because their fan theories were you know that's the thing and it's the same kind of stuff that it's why i i i kind of bitch at people who are always trashing the new trilogy for uh star wars and my reason is if you're going to bash it you better be bashing it for the right reasons and not because your fan theory didn't end up going or you know what i mean luke didn't end up the way you wanted him to at the end of the story you need to bash the actual critical what it actually is yeah right there were, is. there were critical failures in that that especially the last movie more so than even the first two well you know blah blah, blah. although the second one had its issues too with the whole casino thing that was, there was did you hear that there was supposedly that ryan johnson's still going to be doing the third movie or something like that there was these rumors no. or something i heard <laughs> It's that, I it's, it's that Snyder stuff, and we're not going to get talking on that because he got <laughs> a third. And we'll see. Obviously, we got another week or two, I think, until the Snyder Cut comes yeah, out. Yeah, that one. Actually, no, I'll that's down next week. That's this weekend. Is it? I thought it was the 16th. What day is today? Uh, yeah, it's already the 6th of March. <laughs> I mean, th- these days are going by so quick. They do really run by. Uh, I think it's 18th. It's the 7th already of March. Oh, yes. my gosh. Uh, so we got a little more than a week about 10 days 11 days because okay. it comes out the 18th according to uh okay according cool, to cool. Google, so not that much longer, yeah no no days. and i knew it was just a little bit longer and then obviously it's i don't know if it come how it comes out or if it's coming out weekly or i, I hope not i hope they would just throw it all out i honestly once. would not be surprised if it came out weekly the way these things have been going oh, we'll see uh, we'll see i would prefer that it didn't so you watch the whole four hour thing and see if it's good or not Speaking yeah. of, I will say one of my big criticisms of WandaVision, so funny, it's the opposite of Snyder. It was too damn bright. A, a lot of that last episode was. was way too damn bright. There was a lot, a lot of good bright there colors were, going on there for sure. There were good times, but there were times where it was so obscene that it was taking away from the cinematic quality of what it was trying yeah, to show. Yeah, I can see what you mean, yeah. I mean... It wasn't can... all the time, but it was like... I'm trying to remember the exact points, uh, but it was... I remember, like, the blind... Like, there's a section of, like, blindingly white light where you can't see jack crap. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, once again, it's just so bright that it actually doesn't look as good because it feels unrealistic. I guess unrealistic in yeah. a f- fiction, but... They've done a very good job at keeping basically cinema level effects throughout this 
to to the you know to the standard of the time right we talked about how older episodes look like they were done with older effects and stuff like that yeah. but i actually consider that better right it's like making an old movie look like an old movie that's supposed to be what you're doing uh and they did a really good job te- in a technical aspect i think for this setup a lot of the a lot of the dialogue is well written like a film as opposed to a when it needs to be and then as a you know uh, sitcom sitcom when need to be uh one of the best ones i felt like from this one was the uh the whole ship of theseus line it was a great pull and i'm sure a lot of people were mad yeah i was was trying to listen to that and i was like because i was getting uh interrupted but then i I, yeah that was a pretty good little (laughs) yeah (laughs) it's an interesting and it's a classic thought experiment so it's not like it's random i also I'm sure a lot of people were mad about that because they just wanted Vision to beat the shits out of each other. But, but then it, he just... That's just yeah. who he is. He's an AI-based construct. that He's logical. So if you were going to... Especially New Vision, who was, like, programming, it made sense that yeah. he, you know what I mean, followed the logic of what it, who is Vision and what really is Vision, which, once again, is a really cool... Uh, idea that I, that is used in a bunch of different forms of media, the right. whole Theseus ship, but it's it's super interesting when you talk about artificial intelligence and like mind transfer stuff, like you know things like that of what is the consciousness and who is the person? Is the person the body or the right. mind? The mind or the blah blah memories? It made sense to the to the ai programmed version of my face I, I mean it was cool i mean it, i it was cool with me i wasn't expecting like i guess it, you know through the whole thing i guess i wasn't expecting like the biggest showdown because again this isn't what the show was all about to me it wasn't like supposed to be no. like an avengers movie where like you're seeing these big saving the world and like it's like it was just you know what was happening with this one it, character it was literally connect with that person and right it's literally wanda's problems and yeah exactly story, basically like yeah. and then a little bit setting up to other Doctor stuff, Strange obviously, and, stuff. Yeah. A bit, and, and yeah, of course but... it it had its what i consider very comic like it was a little bit less than some i thought it would have been better to have another hero show up that was yeah, the that only would've... that was the only thing well and i guess they technically did because they brought in quicksilver from yeah so technically they did in, in an even bigger crossover, it would have been like the ultimate crossover that the X-Men did. I thought did. it was kind of funny that they did that. No, know? I... Hey, I we we'll just get the PL show that did I, the X-Men. I, I thought it was, but it would have been better if it was actually a different, you know, a multiversal Pietro as opposed to some random dude with speed powers. Oh, which... yeah. I know a lot of people are mad about that, too, because they're like, oh, we thought it was going to be setting up the X-Men. No, and, and, though, <laughs> and though I'm disappointed, it's not all because of that right uh one of the reasons in the sense of doing it is kind of the and it's not in the story right as far as the story world itself totally fine but if you're from real world aspects of like all right well this guy just happens to look like that pietro from that multiverse is a real big troll you know what i mean yeah yeah Uh, that being the bigger thing than obviously in the story it he uh, he doesn't look like other Pietro either, so it doesn't really matter. You know what I mean? He looks no, like whatever. No. He's just some random dude, and could yeah, you know up and down explain some other stuff. Uh, cool looking suit or suit was dope. I thought it was. I was I was super excited for that. That was like my favorite thing. Like oh my gosh, we finally got like like that's what I guess also right really the show did was it really like solidified it her being the Scarlet Witch now and like the I, one that we know of you know I was comic. so <laughs> I was so <laughs> laughing at the laziness of that dialogue what, oh with uh oh what she said at the you're, you, you're yeah, using was... chaos magic Wanda that means you're the Scarlet Witch is that what how yeah. what Someone no okay whatever which is it's not because I got red on my let's go it's, it was just one of those ones where I was like that is some and some lazy right. dialogue writing compared to the rest of the dialogue which was really 
very well done, right? Like the Vision's last talk with Wanda, you know, or yeah, everything uh, was done well. The dialogue, episode, yeah. the dialogue from the people in the town, just kill me! <laughs> oh my gosh, man! <laughs> oh, they this did a great. It was terrible. very, <laughs> it was very much a, in a sense of that was the other reason it was well done. Is it was well done to consider that it was not about a true right even though you had agatha as an antagonist that w she was not the antagonist wanda was still the antagonist of the story mm -hmm. she was still her own problem right at the end right, of the day right. uh and i thought that was really interesting i think there's yeah. not enough shows about that where right where it's not some villain it's not some outside force like thanos or killmonger or uh whatever i always forget the name of ironmonger ironmonger right uh iron man's mm -hmm. enemy it it's us right we are sometimes our own biggest enemy and have to tackle our own problems and how they negatively impact us and those around us and you can go into the metaphors of it all day right of the thing uh, but the the truth is, it was well done, and it really did did bring to light some characters that have been basically backburnered in the comics for yeah fifteen plus yeah. years. I mean, the last time Wanda, and, well, except for Vision having uh, what was it? What was the vi it was just the Vision his own little series recently that was really good. Uh, oh yeah, the yeah, it was just called the Vision, yeah, with yeah. Tom King yeah. writing, which was great. That was a it was really a good, one. good one. It I was liked, I like. I, I did. I feel and like it, they kind of pulled from that too a little it bit. It definitely uh, draws on the kind of needing to be human and regular, and... right? I think even more than that, it draws on the overall aspect of what Wanda and Vision have become, which is this synonymous depiction of like love, but also problems right like uh, that yeah. despite being in love and like they and obviously the comics had their whole <clears throat> back and forth of why they did or why they didn't which i love that they just kind of ignored it honestly in the mcu they just were like no nah, they just fell in love it's like no need yeah. for wonder man consciousness or whatever blah 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 it's yeah just like, i mean comics get like yeah they get very which i saw someone earlier who was like really like Man, that was but really makes... good writing to do that. I was like, it was actually, it's really super lazy. <laughs> it's like, oh yeah, he's a copy of this other dude. So, and that other dude just happened to have a crush on you. Well, I think honestly too, it's more of like you know, because there's just so many different writers, and one comes in, and then like, oh, they're well, like, they talk well, about we're how I can't this remember quo and doing this. It's like, so there's always somebody <sighs> you know changing something or doing something different. Oh, and for sure. That's why I think these stories can kind of get a little like we can go into the whole. Nate Summers, like Cyclops, had had a baby with not really Jean Grey because it yeah, was this deep, you know, yeah, really kind of looked prior. like Jean Grey. So he's like, ah, well, why not? Let's just go well, ahead. No, so they had the baby. Go. Well, Jean, <laughs> everyone forgets to mention that Jean Grey was dead at this point. Yeah. Or but, but, but then, then he that's came like, back he's just and he's like, this. Oh no, no, like, no! no. Cyclops is to be fair. Like. To be fair, Cyclops is always. He's been bad, yeah, like the worst. Like, He's never, and, and, and I, I never knew. Remember, I never knew. I can never remember a time where he was, not that he was written bad right at the beginning, but he was never written as excessively like nice or good. He was always like the team leader as it's far always, as, at least yeah. the, it's, it, for sure for the first hundred, because I've definitely read the first hundred X Men comics from the start, mm -hmm. and I mean. There were things, don't get me wrong, there were other weird messed up things like Jean Grey or <laughs> Professor X having crush on Jean Grey and... Yeah. yeah, yeah. Or, or, like... si or uh, uh, fucking uh, Colossus's and uh, Kitty's relationship when they were had a bigger age difference back in the comic. It was weird. It was... There was always something, you know what I mean? Right. Right. I mean, so... Yeah, I mean it was it was cool though. I like you like said with the, how they did it in there, in this Wandavision show, and they uh, it sounds like they're still kind of going to do the whole kids because you know we heard them kind of towards the end. Oh, of the show I think here. that's hella. What 
I think that's going to be the plot so of that's two. Still, I still that's that still feel like that's going back into the whole. Oh, I'm absolutely that, of that comic plot of you know because that's also convoluted that whole story. Oh yeah, that, Vision Quest but, is super convoluted, which is so. I mean, yeah, I'm excited Quest, for it. We'll, we'll see how it goes. Is... We'll, we'll see how how that all goes down. Um, but uh, yeah, I, I I still like the show. It was still enjoyable. It was oh, good. Sure. I thought it was the best season finale. So I'm excited for what's to come and. I'm not really complaining because, like, say, so, hey, we got uh, Winter well, we Soldier. we finally got some this goddamn month. Marvel content, which yeah. is what I've been it's fucking... it's like, So it's like we get some more this month. So it's like, don't well, worry, guys. It, remind, <laughs> it reminds me of a post I saw earlier where it was just like, we want some, our fans to the writer, we want something new. All right, I'll write something new. Well, no, we don't want something different. But you said you wanted something new. Well, we don't want something new. So I write the same old stuff. Well, that's old. It's boring. But you said you didn't want anything different. Well, we want something new, but not different. <laughs> it's like it's, uh, it's yeah, it's very hard to yeah. Somebody wrote uh, a really good tweet. I think a writer from a comic book that kind of goes into that saying. You know, you don't you can't write for every fan out there. You know, you no. just gotta write and just do it for you, and then they'll you know just keep writing for you, and that's it. That's all you can do. It's the <laughs> whole yeah. the whole point is our discussion that we've had about critics. You don't watch a critic you don't agree with. That's not the point of watching a critic. Uh The point is you find a critic who scores highly movies that you already enjoy and then look for other movies that they're scoring highly because you know they have a similar taste to you. Uh There are no two critics who are ever going to score anything the same score because people are... You know what I mean? And that's fine. That's why people... Was it, I've come to accept that people enjoy like the Snyder stuff, and I just don't. And there are things that I enjoy that other people just don't, right? Like, yeah, it's, yeah. it's fine to have differing opinions. What's not fine is to set arbitrary, you know what I mean, uh, elitism based on that. Like, mm-hmm. the the only metric that you can have objectively for any piece of media is your gross profit sales. That's basically it, because besides that, that's how many people sat down in the seats. Otherwise, is really just preference, right? Like, uh, uh, I don't know, Black Licorice is a good example for me. Like, back in the day, Black Licorice was actually popular, right? Or more popular. (laughs) But that's the point, right? Like, things change, times change, tastes change around the world. You know, uh... I think of like fashion is a bit good example of that where like just because it's good now does not mean it is going to stay good forever right uh right. things that last the test of time are not typically the things that are momentarily popular mm-hmm. necessarily right that, that's not to say that they all aren't but like i was thinking of it the other day because of uh people are like oh you know not everybody, but some people are like, oh, anime is kiddish, or anime is things and cartoons, and uh, things in that vein are not as well written as these serious, realistic stories, right? These these stories mm-hmm. that have realism and darkness and death make are more impressive, right? That's their... Right. But when you consider the stories that are passed down generation to generation, the stories that last the test of time, they are not realistic stories. They are the legends and the fantasies and right. Even then when they're about people, they become exaggerated and fictitious as opposed to realistic and gritty. Right. Mm. No one talks about, uh, Paul Bunyan or whatever. I don't know. Uh, no one talks about all the dudes George Washington shot. They just talk about him cutting down a cherry tree and sailing across the Delaware. It's the the legends and the mythos of things that last the longest time. The stories uh-huh. as opposed to the reality that accompanies those stories. And so I really wish people would like take these stories more seriously despite them being sometimes comic or kiddish, right? All right. Uh, right. And that's not to say that being serious and dark doesn't have its benefits too, but I don't think it should be default or de facto considered uh, better, which you a lot of the... serious. More right, serious. right. It's the same kind of thing. It's like you take the stories that you 
like are based on the times that you watch them, what age you are, mm. the society you're in. All these different things will put into what you like to watch and do and what you're enjoying right. at the time. Like, when I was a kid, I loved watching Pokemon. I couldn't watch Pokemon anymore. At least not the old Pokemon, for sure. No. <laughs> I, I, I do watch some of the new stuff with Isaiah on Netflix now, I'll, but I'll, it's okay. It's The it's, new stuff is it different, is, though. It is appealing more to a younger g- generation, so I'm like, yeah. But I still watch it just because the different Pokemon, that's all. <laughs> it's, it's like it's all Pokemon. And that's not to say that there aren't shows that have a mix, right? Like Adventure Time or Regular Show, which have a yeah. more mix of humor for the ages. But you know, some things yeah. are made. Gumball, for... yeah. Being one of those, I guess I would say too. My, my mom do. actually explained. She's like, she's like, out of all the cartoon shows that everyone, this kid watches, my son, he's like, I can only watch the Gumball show with him because she's like, that's the only one that like really makes sense sometimes what they say because <laughs> <laughs> they say a joke, and then she's like, you know what, that is true. <laughs> so she she likes it for them kind of stuff. So I'm like, and uh, she said, just not as ridiculous as some of the other shows that have come up on. On some of this, uh, these past few years. <laughs> oh, I mean, there's been no end to the, the ridiculous shows, as we all know. The some of them have gotten to the point where I can't. And I've watched some dumb shows, man. Like I watched Squidbillies, but I, I mean, I watched Squidbillies too. <laughs> I mean, here's the thing: I always say this about Squidbillies: is Squidbillies itself super stupid show. The du- the show is. is dumb as hell, but it's written by pretty smart guys. If you pay enough. T- they have very, very smart jokes based in a stupid atmosphere. Right. Uh, it's like, Yeah, it's been one of my favorite. I think they I, still got seasons going on for that one. As far as I know, they <laughs> haven't been canceled, which is crazy to me because, like, the Venture Brothers got canceled, but they haven't, which is wild. You know, I never could get into Venture Brothers. I uh, it was it. It, it felt pretty much it was trying to go for, like, that Johnny Quest. Oh, it of, is like, absolutely going. Raunchy style kind of for me. And I never liked Johnny Quest. I couldn't. The think thing yet, is, but, like... The Venture Brothers was 100% like a Johnny Quest mock-off, but it was like Family Guy, right? Like it was all adult yeah, that's, based yeah. on Johnny Quest. I think that uh-huh. was my thing is I watched a bunch of Johnny Quest when I was a kid. So like, because I remember it like for a while, all we had was like Boomerang or some shit. And it was like, <laughs> right. so I was like, all right, well, I guess I'm watching from Johnny Quest and a bunch of other 60 <laughs> shows that look like they're on acid or something. Like, dude, some of those intros were wild. Like some yeah, of these wild yeah. ass. Anyway, uh... The the point. Oh, oh, go ahead. Oh, sorry. The point being is like that. You can't account for taste, right? Like stupid shows that are stupid mm-hmm. but still funny, and like because they're dead. I mean, the Squid Billies has zero plot. No, there's character. never no plot in no. each episode. It's, it's like, like it's dumb, just some so dumb. Happens. It's realistically some dumb hillbilly shit. That's and every it's like episode. really outside the box, like oh, you know, dude. Billy's Once again, like... it's not even half the time. It's really not even hillbilly stuff. They'll do some wild ass like demon Jesus, like you know what yeah, I mean. They'll they, do whatever they, they, they want. Really they, they they, it, it honestly reminds me of so much of Aqua Teen Hunger Force. Oh, I used to love that show. Too. I, lo- I, I, I also love that. Came out the next season. <laughs> I, I was sad they ended it, but I, by the yeah. time they ended it, it needed to be ended. <laughs> it was like 15 yeah, probably. seasons. It was probably in, about and, that time. And the episodes were no longer banging like they had at one time. Yeah. Which I uh, feel is like most shows, by the time they get to 15 seasons, they're not going to be. So now that we're talking about some new stuff that's coming out here, I did want. Did you see the the Luca trailer? I, from I was going to talk about that too, actually, because it was. I was um, like looking for new trailers of like what's actually yeah, coming out. Pretty, it looked pretty cool. It's about a mermaid yeah. that tries to work on land in Greece, though. So I thought that was pretty it, cool. It looked interesting. I wonder what they're. Um, because I saw the trailer or whatever, I like scanned through it, but I didn't really see what their uh, their conflict was gonna be. I'm sure it'll be something to be with them yeah. being mermaids and on land. Obviously, I mean it's pretty. It's a kids movie, you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, and I, even What's... the one in the trailer, you know, he's like flashing to blue, and he's like, "Where are you from again?" Right. Right. Yeah. Um, that, it looks. I, I always like Pixar movies. They just do such. Pixar like, does a good job animated movies. I just like watching them. <laughs> Pixar does a good job of having a rounded sense of humor as well. Pixar has a lot yeah, of layered yeah. jokes, some for adults. Yeah, or... for the adults. Yeah, I love that they did um, that. Yeah. That... Oh, they and Disney and you didn't do that, but uh, but they've been getting better at it. They're mm-hmm. still not great. Like Pixar's always been great since Toy Story, I think. 
Yeah, Toy Story is probably did, the yeah. first one that they had a ton of like mixed humor in it. So Toy Story was popular. But uh, I, I'm excited for it. I like the animation style. I'm, I'm always up for new Pixar stuff. I think the big thing on this one is going to be that it's much like other things that are releasing in this time. It's going to suffer slightly from covid but it might also do really well because it's the only thing out there you know what i mean so it's yeah it's relative numbers yeah. might do really well i don't know yeah we'll see about that and then uh i have been hearing news that they i guess this is might happen they're supposed to be doing a twisted metal series developed oh. by sony pictures TV. i had i'd heard about this but i didn't know how far it had gotten into its production phase it sounds like they're still going through with it it's getting further um oh the one thing that i was really happy about was that Nickelodeon now is making a dedicated studio just for uh, Avatar, the, the expanded <laughs> universe. I guess they're going to kind of do with this, with well, a new animated movie even coming out. I've, I've heard a couple things. I don't know what. And they have do. the two. Uh, the two creators are actually coming back to I work on that. all this. I heard they were coming back. I have no clue what they're going to do. Me neither. But it's, I mean, I, I don't know. I'd rather the, the creators the, doing something than them not doing that Netflix thing. So. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know how to Netflix now that they, because they left because of creative differences. So I'm like, ooh, I wonder what Netflix is, has you know planned that they. And even there was rumors going around that um, Katara was supposed to be like way like uh, older than Aang and her brother. Mm-hmm. Um, so I was like, yeah, I don't know. There, we'll see how that comes out. I mean, Netflix it, does some good things, and then the, sometimes they don't make some good decisions. <laughs> I think Netflix is real fifty fifty. They definitely were. They are the one who got ahead of the curve. You know what I mean? That's why they yeah, do Yeah, definitely, well. definitely. Yeah, with the streaming, but, definitely they did. But aside from that, like, Netflix has never necessarily offered the most niches or things. Its whole offering was, and actually its whole big offering even back in the day wasn't even just streaming. It was just that it had videos and streaming. So, like, then it became specialized in streaming. Yeah. And- well, they were first, yeah, DVD. Yeah, I watched the whole documentary on it. It was kind of weird how they... I didn't know uh, Netflix has been around that long. Like, yeah, it's been, been a minute. The early 2000s. I was like, yeah. what? And they've they, been, they, been a minute. They I, a my basic website I didn't even know. <laughs> dude, my, I can't remember when my uncle hopped on, but he hopped on back when, before they even had their streaming. You know what I mean? Back when it really was just yeah, mail. Yeah, we did too. Yeah, it was just us with DVDs. And, I think and even before that, they had existed doing some stuff. Uh, mm. But they had not really like popped off. In, like Streaming is what made them pop off, as well as oh, slightly definitely, the... Definitely, yeah. As well as slightly the advent Black- of technology and yeah. the door to door, obviously, like movies for like older stuff. So they had, you know, a, they had a niche. Yeah. You know, what's funny too is Blockbuster actually had a chance to buy them, but they, uh, they, they yeah. said no to it because they thought it was a dumb idea. <laughs> yeah. I remember hearing that one. I've, I've heard a couple different ones for that one with Blockbuster where I'm just like, so, well, I mean, you know, it's, it's. Still probably would have been around if. <laughs> <laughs> they said yeah let's do it because <laughs> yeah. they were looking for somebody to help them like you know yeah, the funny thing is Blockbuster figure... would probably still be around anyway if they just copied their business yeah well they, they tried to because well, then the documentary they actually did try to do it there was a whole department dedicated to it but then I guess they like they cut the program in half and the guy that was doing it was like we're actually doing a really good job and it was he said it would have been good but then he doesn't know I forget what happened for why they cut it off. It's usually thing. political dumb shit. Down. But um, I mean, it was it's an interesting documentary. Check it out. It's um, it's I think it's on Amazon right now. Um, nice. But it was just it, it, but they interviewed all like the people that worked there before, like since the beginning, like when it started. Um, so it was it was pretty interesting to just kind of learn how their whole business started up and kind of as the king as they are now, um, and that just how much money they spend, I guess, on just original content and like. It really doesn't face them, I guess, just because they have so much income coming from their subscriptions every month. So, which is smart, you know. I mean, you're not having to worry about like if your movie's going to flop or not, and if it does, then you've lost a lot of profit from putting all that money towards this. And it's you know, months and months in advance that you're working towards this, and just for it to flop and all that work time. <laughs> and then, but these guys, like, yeah, they just can continue to keep going and going. But uh, uh. I'm, we'll see again what the happens with the Avatar stuff. We'll see. Once again, they make some mistakes and then they do some things pretty good. So I think it yeah. all comes down to like staying. Once again, we talked about staying true to the spirit of the series, which would have helped yeah. to have the original creators to do probably. Exactly. But 
I mean, if they're, that, the fans are the ones that have made that thing come. And then, like, what's cool is I love that Netflix brought Avatar back. It brought in even more new fans that never heard about this stuff. Somebody even put a meme up there where uh, one guy said, or it was, um, it was Uncle Ira and his uh, nephew. Um, I always forget his name. Um, Zuko. Zuko. Yeah. And um, he was just like, "Oh, these new fans are." Uh, are coming in and you know enjoying the show and then he and uncle ira's like it's okay you know don't worry about it it just means more people to drink tea with <laughs> I, and there so was I a bunch that. of really good ones where people are like how did i not know about this and it's like i don't know you nerd didn't watch anime like a nerd no <laughs> thank god but uh it there's i mean it's a really well done series for sure it's one of the oh, yeah. better uh my friend just said he doesn't hope they date George Lucas it. That's what he kept saying. Because he's a huge honest, Avatar on, fan. He honestly, a lot Avatar. of people are already on that fence as far as Avatar is concerned. Yeah. As far as a lot of Avatar fans are concerned, they did that when they went to Korra. Yeah, that's my friend said he... he you know, the first season was good. I'll give it that. The first the, was really good. But then the second season kind of got in. And then third is like, oh, okay, whatever. And then... Yeah, it just, I don't know. It didn't the, hit as good as the first, like, you know, the beginning the, series. The, pr- the problem I had heard is they had to, like, change a bunch of stuff due to the, like, mm, producers. I, I don't know. There uh, was there knows, was a bunch yeah. of ups and downs. And, and the truth is that with any long-running series, the longer it runs, the more errors it will accumulate. Yeah, yeah. Nothing stays perfect forever. And the longer you go the more the chance of not meeting the high quality of high standard of quality you've had before. Right. Um, and Avatar had a, like, had a... Just Avatar. to be a one and done. <laughs> yeah. Well, and once again, the problem isn't even necessarily that it wasn't a one and done. The problem is, once again, the first season, really good. Second, not so much. Third, eh. But Avatar is not that way. Avatar is basically good the whole way through. Yeah, no, it is. It is very well. It's very well rounded as a series. It's one of the few series that I'll say is like, critically speaking, is basically good on all fronts. The problem is, it's not always outstanding on all fronts, but it is good on every single front, in my opinion, of what makes a show good. It has good writing, good dialogue, good story progression, good characters, good world building, good animation, good continuity, good, good. Everything about it, good. The voice acting, good. The animation, good. The story, like, you name it, you name it, it's good. There isn't a single character with maybe one or two exceptions or one or two episodes that I think could be, could or should be cut from the series, right? Like, everyone has their place. It's very well done. Um, Mm -hmm. I mean, well, but if it, but then to meet that standard after that is very difficult, right? It's tough to keep that going. And even, no. To the point where there are parts in certain areas of Avatar, right, that lean to the to the area of good or bad, where people are like, "Well, I want this or that," or right. It, That's kind of why uh, what's his name uh, Hugh Jackman left Wolverine, kind of, because he said like same thing, kind of like you know where I don't want to do too much because then you know I I uh, what was the word the words he says uh, he used like um, I kind of just like. Um, lose my not lose his time but like his um i can't remember exact words he said but he said something along those lines where like you become like you know you're just you've been out there so many times and just done this so many times you become kind of stale at one point um so just like you know it's like it's better to leave out with a bang than leaving out with like oh we're done with you (laughs) so get out of here now and i i kind of agree to the point of like uh man uh stallone in stallone Stallone yeah. as Rocky Ram- or Rambo. as Ra- or or yeah, either one of those two. He's, he's doing another Rambo. I heard. He I'm was sure he's doing, doing another. Doing another one. I'm sure he's doing another Rocky too. I guarantee you, he's got another. Until he dies, that motherfucker is gonna keep doing Rockies and Rambos. And don't get me wrong, he is a ripped son of a bitch. You know what I mean? Yeah. He's a big motherfucker. He's he is, for, yeah. like seventy or something. I don't even remember. Yeah. He's he's huge for his age. I mean, he's huge in general, dude. He makes me look like a pop tart, but <laughs> but that's not the issue. The issue is I'm done with that character. I'm done with him as that character. I want yeah. a different Stallone. I want yeah. a new Rocky. I want something 
right else. It's one of the things G the Bond series did really well is they, they keep a Bond until they're about done with him. And they and just change it up. New yeah, Bond. Exactly. Yep. And it's they've it's worked well for them, honestly. I think it's been a great, great pick. Uh, Superman, kind of the same, but not necessarily 100%. But mm -hmm. the point being is it, you got to switch up the characters eventually. It's... It's it would it it's just not right. You know what I mean? Characters yeah. even in of themselves change and develop and and once again it's the whole happily ever after thing, right? Like no story ends and then they live happily ever after. Right, right. I mean they do, but that's not how any actual you know what I mean, story ends. That the story yeah. always continues. Exactly. Well, on some other notes in here, did you see, I actually uh, subscribed for about a week to the Paramount Plus um, that they just came out with. Oh, nice. And uh, it's been a really nice refresher just going in there and being able to watch like all the old Nickelodeon shows with my son. So we've been watching like Angry Beavers, oh, Rock wow, yeah. Modern Life, All oh, Real Monsters is on there. Been a minute since uh, I've seen that one. All uh, the original, all that, the Amanda show, like it yeah, has like yeah. pretty much almost all these old school Nickelodeon shows that... Uh, we, oh, even afraid? Of, are you afraid of the dark? I'm like, I've oh, never, wow. I haven't seen that forever. <laughs> yeah, a lot of those have been a while. I don't know why, but so, thinking of all that is kind of depressing. <laughs> That's what I kind of said too. I, the other day, I was like, like, damn, I'm getting so old, man. It's I like, mean, oh. even beyond getting so old, I always think like, man, I'm getting so old. But then I think all the people from all that are like in fucking jail, bro. Like half of them are in <laughs> fucking jail right now, or dead, or some. Sh I swear to God, all these like. Like, half of all that did, like, decent. You know what I mean? They went on and, like... Half of some of them, yeah. And like, then half like, got, like, got pregnant, did drugs, and said, fuck life. Right. I don't know. Yep. I'm probably exaggerating, but I, <laughs> I feel like that's but, what uh, I think when I see that shit. I'm like, it was uh, It was cool, though, to watch it. We did watch the new uh, SpongeBob movie on there. Um, oh, cool. Which wasn't too bad. It was good. It was good. And they also released their uh, their original series for Par that's only for Paramount+. Plus. It's... Uh, it's for the uh, after movie kind of thing where we get to see them as like in this camp uh, council kind of thing, like in a summer camp. Mm. And they're all little. They're probably like maybe seven, eight year old kids. And they're all doing the little baby voices. And so after watching that movie, you can watch the show that kind of shows more of them doing their camp shenanigans a little oh, bit. Okay. So Mr. Krabs is there. We have like little baby Pearl. Um, Patrick's there. Squidward. Um, which is cool. It's like all, it sounds like all the original actors picked up and did all their uh, their voices for it, but they're just kind of doing like a little bit of a kid voice into it. But uh, it sounds like it's the original voice actors. But that's been pretty cool. And um, but I, what, what I wanted to bring up was that uh, Rugrats is coming back. Did you see the trailer for that? I didn't see the trailer. I did hear it was coming. Oh, you know what? I think I did see the fucking it's, trailer. It's CPI. Oh, yeah, I did yeah. see the fucking. I, I'm only excited. I am only excited because really. The original voice actors will be coming to be doing their their uh, their characters. You know, so that's the I'm, only reason I'm, why I'm happy. I'm gonna be a hundred percent on this, like, and it's the same for like any of the SpongeBob stuff. Like, at at a certain point, all these motherfuckers are gonna die. Yeah, they yeah, gotta be getting right. there. These stoves have been out for thirty years almost, or like 20, 30 years. Twenty. Yeah, I think. Well, some yeah, of those all bats and shit would have been. Sure. Oh yeah, SpongeBob was ninety nine, I believe, or two thousand. Yeah, yeah, it was early. I think it was two thousand when it first came 2000. out. Two yeah. thousand, but all the Nickelodeon shit that was all pre two thousand. I think that was like ninety nine, ninety eight for all that. Oh, at yeah. least the, yeah, at yeah, least yeah, the yeah. original episodes, and then like certain mm -hmm. ones were even older, obviously. But mm -hmm. thinking of them like that, where it's like, and and that's once again twenty or twenty five years on top of however old those voice actors were when they got that part so yeah most of them were probably at least in their 20s you figure yeah. you figure we'd be lucky to get another 20 or 30 years out of them before they're mm. not maybe dead but done voice act like they don't want a voice <laughs> which yeah. if even then because i'm sure that takes a toll on the voice for some people maybe not everybody but well uh simpsons just got renewed for three more seasons as well. Ah, I mean, I'm not even <laughs> at this point. It's like, does anybody even watch anymore? How do they even? I, you, there's some people, honestly, yo, that just watch it religiously still. Like, there's still like it's still Simpsons mania, that, like, huh? Yeah, I just I never it's hear or think or hear. Nobody ever like. I never not, meet not these people. 
<laughs> right? That's, right? That's it's the same with like the Snyder stuff where I'm like, I just don't believe it because I never meet these people in real life and I don't know if, where they're at. How do I find these people and talk to them and get like a down and dirty? No, but I, I mean, I get it. Um, yeah, like, I mean, I I still watch it just for the the Treehouse of Horror every year. I will, I will watch the Treehouse of Horror, but I mostly don't watch it all. I mean, I if that no, ca- that kind of goes for Family Guy and uh, once the only one I still past... watch religiously is South Park. Still, like South Park, still Even, got a thing going on. I with mean, them, I don't. So. I, I'll watch South Park, but I like I'll do a little catch up of South Park. I'm like, all right, I'll watch a season. What like? Mm. Two well, now bringing that up. Count. I well see what I liked what South Park was doing now is like now they're actually doing like continuity for all their episodes. So no, like that the was last they've been doing that for like it probably probably doing five, that for four like or five, five seasons now. Yeah. yeah, but uh, what also did you know that they're coming on with their uh, vaccination special this Wednesday? Right? Oh, that's gonna be great. <laughs> I watched. I, I, few, haven't, uh, I haven't. I haven't watched. It. It looks ridiculous. I'm trying to um, remember the last thing I watched. I think the last season I watched was where they were doing the fucking self driving car thing, and you know, they're like running people over or whatever. And I kept. I was so oh, yeah. fucking pissed because I was like, they keep making me laugh at kids getting run over by cars. <laughs> and I can't fucking help myself. I was like, I know it's fucking coming, but I can't stop myself. But it's, it, and it's they've, done, they've done good. South Park stays doing well, but my problem is like, because it's now so topical and so yeah. like moving, I have to wait until it's done. Is no longer like a week to week show for me, which it obviously mm-hmm. is, and it still can be pushed in that way. But it's more like a comic series for me, where I just wanted to watch the whole season in one run yeah. and see the little story that they wrote. That makes sense, yeah. Because be now cool. there's a little story, whereas before it was like one off shenanigan episodes. Yeah, it was always just yeah. I know it would give a fuck what episode you watch, so I, I'd watch every week to see what they were doing. Although I I never religiously watch any show no, me i feel neither. like not me neither. not like week to stuff. week you know what i mean no south park is probably the only one i some, do now so some new starting. yeah some new shows yeah, i will but... say i do like if a new show comes out and it's weekly releasing like the mandalorian or wandavision etc i mean i still watch walking dead still i mean if and i'm only I watching it dropped it's finally again. ending is it's it finally, finally ending because they said that yeah, before and it's like, like, oh they said they're done like, okay. it's the last season and then they're gonna hit the um, end of the season they're gonna doing be like, those yeah, I'm doing more. Like, they have the walking the world beyond walking oh dead. dude don't even get me started my pops started watching that one which is about the kids right I was going to keep watching it, but my mother said, "No, don't even put it on. Don't don't start another one of the why." I'm like, "Come on, but we gotta watch this because this somehow connects, I guess, to the other one." She's like, "No, don't even start." I was my, like, okay, I, I guess we're not gonna start this one. It was so funny because, like I said, I think my pops has started that because he's a big, he's really just a big TV oh, watcher. Watch like, oh, okay, yeah. He, he just when he's done with work, he'll come home and you know watch a TV show, and he'll kill one the night or something. You know what I mean? It doesn't matter because right. he's just gonna sit there and watch that new show for like four hours or some shit or five hours and and do what he's got to do um but he's there's some times where he's just like he's like i couldn't watch this fucking piece of shit show <laughs> he's like i didn't make no fucking sense these kids are so stupid they should all be dead <laughs> like that thing fucking keeps screaming I'm like yeah i i get it um, i've had a couple yeah yeah um i was gonna say though uh some other things too here pokemon had their little uh Little, uh, oh, because it was the 25 years anniversary, oh, okay. um, which is on February 26th, it looks like. So they introduced a couple of things. They are uh, releasing a new game called uh, Pokemon Legends Acarus or Icarus. I can't remember. I don't know. Um, which is a, di- a very different type of style of Pokemon game. And it looks like Game Freak is uh, making this one, too, as well. Instead of like, you know, how you when you see a Pokemon, the Pokemon and you would enter battle mode or, you know, cash mode or whatever. Yeah, yeah. This one's all like real time where it's just now the Pokemon pops up and you just throw your Pokeball and you try to catch them or whatever. And then you can actually fight them like, you know, uh, almost kind of like, like poke poking kind of style instead of like doing turn based style. Um, I mean, so that's, that's something they're coming out with. I, I mean, something different, right? Than the whole I, I what think, they always do every year. I think it's a good thing to always stay fresh right like the thing about pokemon that's weird is like it's one of those games like madden it thrives off of the similarity from last game but it also has to introduce something new new tech yeah tech you know right new tech 
three D mega form uh, team battle. Right, every generation something changes. Something's mm-hmm. added. Something there's slight modifications. Water warfare, Madden do the same thing. Every year it's basically the same game, but. I will say Pokemon's luckily in a spot where it can do more than that because of the manga, the anime, the world showing. Yeah. Uh, and obviously Pokemon popular. It's huge right now. I don't know what's to, going on. Like, I've been hearing be, what's going on with like, the Pokemon. To be fair, Pokemon right just never fell off. It never did, but like there's a it's huge It popped butt, back like, up again. It right now. Um, it popped back I can, up. I go to the targets everywhere, yo, and like they're all gone, like the Pokemon cards. Every, you know what happened? Okay, really, I, I was talking to somebody, and he was telling me he's like, "What happened? It was all Paul Logan's fault." <laughs> of course, it was Paul, <laughs> Cause he, Paul Logan. Because he he had bought like literally, I think half half a million in like this card, and I can't remember what it was. Oh, he spent half a million, I think, on like a, a whole box of first gen cards. Yeah, and. Like, literally, like, all the scalpers and all the, like, people saw money into it. And so they just, like, literally been buying up, like, all that and baseball cards and all those, those cards. The thing is, like, that person. it's the whole comic book bust thing. Once people invest in it, it's no longer rare and it loses its mm-hmm. value. And it's the Yeah, same. and then, well, and then I know some of the first-gen stuff will. And, well, that's uh, the thing. If you, could get your, if you can get your hands on first-gen cards, well, yeah, those I wish are I always – I, I have a book them. of cards downstairs we found at a construction site. I think it's full of oh. second gen, but it's they're still, still in the still. they're still in the sleeve. So they're half of them are fine. I gave one to yeah. my nephew and destroyed it immediately. It's like Pikachu, and it's <laughs> like that's <laughs> right. That's not so. Pikachu. No, it's it's, a, it's Jolteon. No, um, <laughs> but it that it's the whole thing with it where it's one of those. It's the whole GameStop market thing, right? The, oh yeah it's it's a false inflation of price where like the fact that so many people are doing it is going to reduce the value of doing it right mm-hmm. and not to say that people haven't already been doing that i know a dude who did that already that was what he did was pull no there's there's the guys yeah streams. that just do it as a business yeah right there's they just do it on streams or on and on, they they do fine yeah there's it's money to be now made that as long as you do it right are- and going up like a little bit more ridiculous and then like even too in the comic scene i've been seeing the same thing like some modern comics are going for some like ridiculous prices that like bronze or golden age comics should be going up in price in that range i think like the, like the something the killing the children i oh my gosh bro like 9.8s are going ridiculous right now i keep watching I, like I i'm in the community and we're all talking about it and we're like what the hell is going on <laughs> <laughs> I'm guessing so that just... there's either a supply or a demand fix. So either yeah. there's not enough of them out there, right? That people are not well, able to get their definitely hands. Not. Yeah, definitely not for this one because it it was right when COVID kind of hit this one. Right, this and, and that's so kind of my thing. With COVID, out, with COVID out, there are less books being produced. There are less numbers of these books being produced. And so they're yeah. going to be harder to get your hands on, especially – when you consider the dynamic in the business that the people who have bought in this are going to want to hold on to it until it increases in value a bit. Obviously it's already doing that, but the the Yeah, yeah that that's a market thing where it's 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 either false stimulation or a real stimulation, which I think is the COVID based uh, of lack of then media. I think that too, yeah, and I think it's just yeah, like you said, it's just a lot of people jump finding you basically really i feel like a lot of these collectors is people are coming from are coming from the scene that we're coming from the shoe pe- uh, people and also from the ticket sell people like they're seeing now that like there's money in toys and there's money because like toys are so ridiculous even to get now two days and like um they're seeing money in pokemon cards they're seeing money in comics now like because i mean there was comic speculators and stuff like that but like it's seen i feel like it's seen a big boom here lately i think with, a lot like, of it is COVID happening yeah, because... i think a lot of people have time to sit on their ass and yeah, speculate yeah. now you know what yeah, i mean so exactly. it's the same for stocks right like the more people who have time to do it, the more people who do it the, the fluctuations in the market are going to cause changes right uh, speaking of i think we just hit our hour mark so oh, okay well, let me go over then, I guess, my last thing. That was pretty much it. Oh, I wanted to ask, did you read Keanu Reeves' Berserker uh, book yet? No, I haven't checked it out yet. <laughs> He's so brutal, man. He's, like, literally punching holes in people's heads and by. <laughs> <body. laughs> of course like, he oh is. Oh, of course he is, just because I'm a level – I'm – kung pao enter the fist man oh it was really funny because he was actually in the spongebob movie and he was like a uh dust cloud or dust ball or whatever you know from the western 
that comes in. Oh yeah, it's that like is that little funny. guest we have, whatever you call him. And he was like literally just the head, and he was like their guidance for SpongeBob and Patrick through the whole movie. And I was like, this is so funny. That just <laughs> that reminds the... me of the old uh, who did they have dude in the other one where he was the the ship. Uh... Oh, uh, that was uh, David Hasselhoff. Yes, Hasselhoff. That was it, Hasselhoff. <laughs> the Hoff. Don't hassle the Hoff. And then, uh, if you guys can, if you have HBO Max, I mean, I would recommend taking out Tom and Jerry. I mean, there's literally nothing else to watch, but you might send that to it. And, <laughs> there's uh, literally nothing can. else to watch. I mean, it was oh, good. I man. enjoyed it. I've been, meaning, I've been meaning to check it out. I checked it out a little bit, but when I scanned it, there really wasn't all that much I wanted to check out. I mean, Wonder Woman no. 2, I guess, but yeah, that, since and that, then, I uh, haven't. And then, yeah, then that was kind of... I'm still recovering see. my trust from that. <laughs> And then, uh, oh, Aliens uh, three-player co-op is coming, uh, multiplayer. So I'm excited for that. That's supposed to actually be releasing this summer. Uh, the gameplay looked, it looks like people are already saying like, uh, oh, do you mean this is supposed to be what Colonial Marines is supposed to be? <laughs> I'm like, yeah, this looks pretty good. The, hopefully the AI is really good. I mean, I mean, I know that was a big issue with the Colonial Marines game. and The AI and the Aliens was really like bad, um, not, e- not even playable at some points. Um, oh, uh, Neil Blomkamp is going to be doing District 10 here, uh, which yeah, is supposed to I think be we a sequel about that for his nine. So that would be pretty cool. Oh, and I wanted to say, have you seen Peach Momoko's uh, Demon Days uh, Marvel book? That came I hadn't out? Uh, read it yet. I think I saw one of your posts where she was doing some of the inking. Yeah, it was pretty cool. I liked it. It was a um, what she did is she just kind of did a Japanese old traditional Japanese stories mixed in with like Marvel characters. Um, so I thought it was pretty cool. So like. She made like some of the demons be like Hulk. Like Hulk was like this de- uh, demon oni uh, hmm. character in there. Um, Venom was like this demon snake creature that they would call Venom, and he looked kind of like Venom a little bit, but it was like a snake, like a big giant snake. Um, there was even uh, I think Psylocke is the main character in this one. I can't. I'm not too sure, but um, yeah, it's pretty cool. It's interesting how they're uh, she's doing this. So it's a interesting to see. she's doing everything the story art inking everything for it so uh we won't get the next issue till june uh, but oh, i really geez. enjoyed it I thought it was cool i thought it was really interesting she's a very busy girl that's for sure they have her doing covers like crazy <laughs> yeah i was gonna say it's like june's june's a bit man that's a that's a two yeah and they were uh they were kind of like i guess their own uh stories within so i guess you could read the first one and you'll be okay to read the second one because it kind of does its own little separate story so i hope she's uh we'll see because the other one seemed like it was going into like the red uh, or not the the Black Widow character next, so um, but we'll see how she's gonna go with the whole story. But uh, I enjoyed it so far. I I, I recommend checking. Oh, and sorry, last few things. Um, Patrick Starr is getting a spinoff show now. Oh lord, with his really? own family. Yeah, with his own family. Just check it out. There's already drawings of them together. <laughs> and well, then uh, we got his family before. <laughs> Uh, well, they're different, actually. I don't. I don't think they look different. Like I don't remember his mom and dad looking like that. Uh, but then they have like this other octopus with like a tra- a diamond shaped head, little girl. I don't know if that's his sister. And then there's like this older dude with a beard uh, that might be his grandpa. <laughs> um, then they did show off a little bit of what the Looney Tunes are gonna look like in the new Space Jam Two movie. Um, and then I think that was almost about it. Oh, um, I think that was pretty much it on my list. I know that they, uh, yeah, I think that was it. I didn't really have nothing else then. Nice. I mean, there's lots of stuff coming. They definitely changed the designs for his parents. That's funny. Yeah. Wonder See, I told you. Go- I, I wonder how they're going to, I wonder how they're going to do that. Or maybe they didn't. I swear they had showed his parents. They did. I do remember them showing his parents in one episode at one point. And they were like literally oh. just him with a fucking wig. Yeah, like it's literally him with a wig and a fucking head. Yeah, I see. So I guess they can kind of. Here, here's the thing: if you look at the new character, nope. Even with the, if you look, nope. It's nope. That's gonna bug <laughs> me. That's gonna yeah. bug me. That's yeah. gonna bug me. All right. Well. It's it's definitely been a good episode. Uh, hopefully, you know, we'll see some good new stuff coming out by next week. Especially because without until the Snyder Cut comes out, I think we're kind of like blank. 
Yeah, we just have that, and then Godzilla at the end of the month, and um, I felt like there was some new Netflix stuff to check out. Oh, I forgot. Check out the new uh, anime's uh, Pacific Rim that came out. Oh, I did hear about that one. I haven't checked it yeah, out that, yet. That just came out too today. It's all done in CGI, but you know how I feel about CGI anime. I mean, but it, it's okay. I mean, I'll. I'm always up and I'll down on it. it. That I it, it's CGI okay. it's CGI it. never kills the anime for it. It's always got to be the story. Like, yeah. I'll watch a piece of shit CGI animation if the story is That's good. kind of why I'm watching it, too, because the story is pretty overall so pretty good. There's some pretty good emotion in the That's first good. episode. That's good. Uh, second episode is pretty good. Uh, I've only gotten to the fourth one so far, but uh, monster uh, fights are pretty good. Um, and then it kind of uh, introduces some new lore to the to that universe a little bit with, like, introducing, like, new different kaiju that we've never seen before. Gotcha. Um, a new character of some sort that looks like he was in a lab that was in. So, yeah, I'm curious to see what this is going to lead up into. I mean, um, I didn't see who's creating it. I don't know if Guillermo de Taro has his say on this. Um, I somehow doubt you know, it. Most of the time. <laughs> well, you, I'm curious like how, how they're, they're going to Japanese this, basically. <laughs> yeah, we'll see. Maybe. We'll I see. mean, I don't know if the story. I mean, the thing is, it does lend itself towards it because obviously it's Godzilla based, but. We, it's all about execution, right? Like cause some Godzilla yeah. stories aren't that great. <laughs> no, despite no. them, despite them being based on Godzilla. So, but yeah, sounds good. I think that was pretty much it. I know we didn't really get into any comics because uh, there was nothing else I I wanted to say. I read. I mean, I know I told you I read Berserker. Um, shoot. Let's see. I guess I could just. Oh, uh, I you have to check out that new Star Wars. Have you read it yet? Uh, the mainline one or the... The High Republic one. Oh, no, I still haven't checked. No, wait, did I check that, out High Republic? That's the one with the new uh, the new characters from uh, well, from the before Luke's time and everything and all that. Um, basically, you know, this is was supposed to be with uh, Star Wars Night of the Jedi. Or I forget what run that was. The Jedi Knight. I can't remember exactly. But anyways, this is yeah supposed to be way before Luke is born and anything like that. We do get Yoda because we know he's pretty... F- F and old, so <laughs> he's the only character that's uh, that we know that's in there, and everyone else is pretty new. Um, and then they also have some novels that came with it as well. If you want to read more, even more on these characters, I'll have to check. Hopefully, they're new characters and not rehashes. From oh, Legends. definitely, yeah, definitely, definitely new characters. Like I have, uh, I haven't heard anything from anybody talking about these ones. Um, there's uh, one of the main uh, characters that we kind of follow. Her name is uh, well, she becomes she's a paddle one, and then she becomes a Jedi Knight. In the first issue, and uh, her name's Keeve, I believe. I forget the first name though. Um, but yeah, it's uh, it's really interesting to see how they're doing. They're doing like more of like uh, if the if the Jedi Knights were more of a, like a noble type type era. So like even the lightsabers, they don't look you know like the janky kind of like looking ones with metal and everything. These ones look very like royal like almost you know like they have like these nice golden patterns and they look very fancy and <laughs> this kind of, and they're they're wearing very like uh white golden robes and looking very fancy in their uh their jedi robes even so they it's uh, for sure kind of a different era that they're going for on this one but we'll see i've I've enjoyed the first three issues so far so you might have to check it out if you like it i'll have to check it out and see once again i I don't Uh, remember the names of them off top but there's a billion and two stark wars characters in legends so (laughs) so so many probably (laughs) but all right sounds good that's pretty much all i had on my list then here all no, right, we'll for sure. With it tomorrow, if I have any more, I missed. <laughs> or right. next week, I mean. Uh, yeah, we'll definitely have to do that. I mean, we definitely will have time too, because the Snyder Cut won't be out next week, and nothing basically probably will change from today till then, as far as the mo- <laughs> the mo- movies and stuff and COVID. So we're still gonna be just waiting on whatever we already know is coming, yep. and hoping for new news. So, thank you everybody who's been watching, and uh, yeah, we'll catch you next time on Comic Convos.